Okay, hi guys. So in the previous example, we already looked at how we can solve compound interest for a case of single payment. Okay, now we are going to look at the compound interest example for the case of annual series. Ah, sudah. Error dia dah jadi makin banyak. Banyak-banyak-banyak. So how are we going to solve it? Let's check it out. Okay, so in this example, for the past 7 years, let's draw the timeline for 7 years, a company called FKP Energy has paid $500 every 6 months for a software maintenance contract. Okay, please notice the arrow yang I buat tu is for every 6 months. Sampailah 7 tahun. Okay, um, the question asks you to find what is the equivalent total amount at the last payment, which is at year 7. And the interest rate is 8% per year compounded quarterly. Ah, nampak je perkataan compound ni. The rose ingat effective interest rate. Okay, so in order to solve this, again, I always like to illustrate it in yearly basis first. Okay, so I'm drawing the timeline up to 12 months and then um, we know that the interest rate is 8% for one year and we know that the interest rate are being compounded quarterly. So there will be four compound period in one year. Okay, so each block represents 2% of interest. Okay, um, and then please don't forget in your original cash flow, there are two annual series happening every six months with the amount of $500. Okay, don't forget that. Okay, to solve the annual series problem, the first step is that you need to find what is the effective interest rate for the payment period. So in this case, you see, the first payment tu dia berlaku pada bulan ke-6 kan? And then you notice that the interest are already being compounded. The card block warna orange tu, the interest are already being compounded. So you cannot simply kira interest as in 2% plus 2%. Tak boleh dah. You have to calculate the effective interest rate for that particular payment period. In this case, every 6 months. And then the next step is you have to find what is the payment period. Okay, so basically the step is still the same with the previous examples. Okay, let's do this. So the first step is we need to find the effective interest rate for the payment period using the RM formula. The R in this case is 2% plus 2% which is 4% or 0.04. The M is the number of blocks within that payment period. So, ada berapa block until uh, bulan ke-6? Ada dua block. So, our M would be 2. So, we just substitute that values into our equation and we will get the value of effective interest rate to be 4.04%. And please remember that 4.04% is for 6 months. Okay, now the next step is we need to find what is the N. Okay, you see, we are calculating the payment period for every 6 months, kan? So, if I represent that payment period with a block, then there would be 2 blocks for 1 year. Okay, the yellow and the orange block. That is for 1 year. So, if we like look at our yearly cash flow diagram, we can redraw it. And so, okay, the 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 actually represent the payment period. Okay, so in this case, the total payment period from year 0 up to year 7 is 2 multiplied with 7. So, you will get 14 payment period. So, now we already know what is our effective interest rate and we already know what is our payment period. So, the next step is you need to convert the annual series into an equivalent future worth. So, you can convert the annual series into equivalent future worth by multiplying it with the FA factor. The I percent, the I would be the effective interest rate for that particular period which is every 6 months and our N is the payment period which is 14. So, substitute that value into our equation. Alamak, macam mana nak tengok ni dalam compound interest table? There's no 4.04% in our table. So, remember, all this can be calculated using formula. Formula biasanya are provided. Okay, so you just substitute that values in the formula and you will get the equivalent future worth at year 7 to be negative $9,171.09. See? Dah siap! Dah siap!